Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. So you know it's like almost the end of February, and I think this is my first book review of the month, but don't worry, I've got like a bunch coming for you. Um, I kind of struggled to get through books this month, not because I read bad books, just because I didn't have a lot of time. Um, and February is really short, so I've gotten through four books right now. I'm about to start book number five. Hopefully I'll be finished with book number five by the time this video is up, but I doubt it. But um, no, I wanted to talk about my first review for February 2023, and that is Such Sharp Teeth by Rachel Harrison. Before I continue though, it is pouring outside, so if you hear like a crackling in the background, that's the rain hitting my window. Um, don't know what to do about that, but oh well. Anyways, Such Sharp Teeth by Rachel Harrison. So this came out just a couple months ago. I received it in one of my Nightworms packages. Um, right when I was reading Cackle, which is, um, Rachel Harrison's, I believe, second novel, so I think this is her third. I have an entire review on Cackle. It was probably the most recommended book to me of last year. Um, and it is a book that I feel many, many, many different ways about. Um, I believe it was a four-star read from me, but it was, like, a very hesitant four-star because I hated the characters and I hated the ending and yet the writing style was so easy and fast-paced to read that I just didn't want to stop reading it. Um, and I've noticed that that's something very, very characteristic of Harrison. Um, I'm just gonna go out right out and say this was a four-star read from me. Um, I believe I liked it more than Cackle. It did have its issues and I'm gonna go in and dissect all of that. Um, but this book was so easy to read. It, like, her writing style is just so, it, it's, it's so millennial, and th that's a phrase I, like, really didn't want to use, but the way that she writes, it's like talking to, like, a 29-year-old, um, who's really good at telling stories. Like, it's very engrossed in today's culture and pop culture and society and vernacular, um, and slang and just the entire world of, like, the late 20s, early 30s, and millennial, so on the border of, like, millennial without getting into like the gen z territory of it all um and i'm the same age group as i feel the target audience is so it's something that i felt very close to reading this and it's something that i felt very close to reading with cackle um it also helps that she sets a lot of the background of her characters in new york city and being like removed from new york city so there's this kind of homesickness for manhattan I live in Manhattan, um, so there's just a lot that I feel like I immediately connect with in her main characters because she loves to mention places that are actually here in the city that I've been to, experiences that I've had. Again, I tend to be about the same age as the characters in her stories, I'm about the same age as Rachel Harrison herself, so I really connect with these characters, and I feel like there's definitely some people who might find her writing style more juvenile or might find her writing style more niche because of that, but for me it really speaks to me. So I'm gonna read the back of this book for y'all real quick, or the inside flap, whichever it is. So it says, Rory Morris isn't thrilled to be moving back to her hometown, even if it's only temporary. There are bad memories there, but her twin, but her twin sister Scarlett is pregnant, is strange from the baby's father and needs support. So Rory returns to the place she thought she'd put in her rear view. After a night out at a bar where she runs into Ian, an old almost flame, she hits a large animal with her car, and when she gets out to investigate, she's attacked. Rory survives, miraculously, but life begins to look and feel different. She's unnaturally strong, with an aversion to silver, and suddenly the moon has her in its thrall. She's changing into someone else, something else, maybe even a monster, but does that mean she's putting those close to her in danger, or is embracing the wildness inside her the key to acceptance? This dark comedic love story is a brilliantly layered portrait of trauma, rage, and vulnerability. Um, is this a romance? Not really. Uh, I was suggested reading this book um, after I read The X Hex or The Kiss Curse, one of those two, same series, um, as being like a werewolfy romance. There's romance in it. I don't really think this is a romance. I think this is a pretty solid first person perspective on what it would be like to turn into a werewolf and not realize what was going on. Um, I love the idea that, like, the idea of the werewolf is common knowledge. Like, 
like we have it today, right? Like, I hate in zombie movies when, like, zombies come and everybody's like, oh my god, The Walking Dead, what are these? It's like, no, like, zombies are a part of pop culture. So, like, the werewolf is part of the vernacular in this world. Um, and I really, really like that. Uh, I love the denial of Rory. I love the just general reaction that she has to being a werewolf. Like, it's so real and believable and, like, rooted in today's world that it just, it was so realistic. Um, and I really appreciated that part. I thought the entire werewolf transformation sequences that they did were great. Again, I thought a lot of it was very, very believable from that perspective. And yet, for some reason, this story didn't really focus on the werewolf aspect. It was more a focus on the idea of not having control over your own body, which I think is really, really interesting because that is the core theme throughout all of the major plot lines of the story. Um, primarily comparing Rory being and becoming a werewolf and having no control over her body and the way it reacts to certain things and obviously how it reacts during the full moon to her very pregnant sister who is very unhappy in her pregnancy because of how her body is. Um, I cannot believe I'm saying this, especially because I found Cackle to be so unfeminist in the way it ended. This was such an amazing metaphor. Um, just from a female perspective, it's something I never thought of before. And it made like the scariness of pregnancy feel very tangible to somebody who's never been pregnant um, by comparing it literally to turning into a werewolf. Um, again, she had an unplanned pregnancy. It was kind of like this metamorphosis for that character. And I thought it was really, really well done. Um, and just how, we don't talk in society so much about how like, yes, that woman might want her baby and to be a mom, but like going through the physical transformation to get to that point is fully out of her control and not really pleasant. And I just loved that metaphor. I thought it was so well done. I thought it was, while it wasn't necessarily subtle, it didn't feel super in your face. Like it was just very perfectly paralleled with um, Rory's own werewolf transformation sequence. And I thought that was, fantastic. Um, and I thought it was really interesting too how Rachel Harrison also used um, kind of the, uh, how can I say this on YouTube and not get flagged? There's child abuse in this. Um, and it also functions as a metaphor for its different characters, several different characters of being the child and not understanding what's happening around you and why adults are acting certain ways and again having no control over the situation that was also kind of propped up as a metaphor for uh the werewolf transformation i will say i don't necessarily think the book needed that um because to me it was already so perfect with um the analogy between scarlet and her pregnancy and rory and her werewolfism her lycanthropy that I don't think that um, the abuse concepts in this novel were necessarily needed. Um, and while I kind of understand where Rachel Harrison was coming from, it just wasn't strong enough to be such a pivotal point in the story. It really just explains dysfunctional relationships with other members of Rory's family which again didn't add too too much apart from like minor character development in my personal opinion. I was more interested in the parallels between Scarlet and Rory. Um, that being said, this is another one of Rachel Harrison's novels where I really don't think I like any of the characters. <laughs> and yet I still was so invested in reading the story. Rory is fine. Rory has an ego. Rory is not somebody I would be friends with. Um, kind of in the same way, what was her name in? Um, Cackle was Annie. Might have been Annie. I wouldn't have been friends with the main character in Cackle either. Uh, I liked Rory more, uh, but Rory kind of had this arrogance about her that I didn't like. Um, Ian, I felt like wasn't fleshed out enough as a character. Like their romance story is kind of cute. Um, but him and many of the other side characters are very, very one note. Um, like Rory's best friend, Ashley, is just kind of the perfect best friend. Like, She's a great mom, she's a great host, she's a great friend. The The mom is just this guilt-ridden mother who is trying her best but can't get over her own shortcomings and therefore ignores them. Like, a lot of the side characters just had 
all of these very, very one note backgrounds. Like even Mia, Mia was like the rebellious one, you know, and then Maddie um, was like just the, the confused boyfriend, you know, like there were all these just very one note side characters that propped up our two main characters, which were Rory and Scarlett. Rory, not a likable person personally, like I don't, I wouldn't hang out with her in real life. Interesting to read about. I was totally cool reading a whole book through her perspective. Her sister is a terrible person. She is terrible for what she does to Rory. She is terrible for what she does to Maddie. She is terrible for how she just literally takes and takes and takes from everybody around her. And that's the one thing that I think cheapened the the werewolf um, pregnancy metaphor is we had one person who was acting very selfless with a selfish attitude about it compared to somebody who was extremely selfish acting helpless. Um, and I could not stand Scarlet. She's one of the most selfish, self-centered characters I've ever read about. And the more and more you learn about her, the more and more I disliked her. And that to me was just difficult because the whole time it's like, you, you're, you, at first you feel like compelled to kind of feel bad for this struggling pregnant alone woman. And then the more and more you learn about her, the more you're just like, I cannot stand you as a human being. Um, so she was despicable and she doesn't really get her come up and it's just kind of like in cackle, like these terrible, terrible, selfish characters kind of become these like metaphorical vessels for Rachel Harrison's, um, personal definition of feminism. And then they never get their comeuppance for like the sins that they commit. And I find it really interesting. Rachel Harrison's definition of feminist, like I would love to chat with her about her personal ideas of a strong woman because it just feels so skewed in so many ways. I feel like lies and manipulations are like common, um, lies and manipulating are common features of her strong female leads. Um, and like, taking their own personal problems out on men around them. Like, it, it's very strange and it's not necessarily the dialogue I would have with, um, like, feminism in literature, especially in horror literature. Uh, so I, it's definitely something I would love to chat with her about. Not that that'll ever really happen. Maybe I'll meet her at a book signing. Um, but even then, I still loved the writing. Like, I feel like I would just buy anything Rachel Harrison wrote because, again, the writing is so easy. The stories are so unique. I love their little small town settings and then I love seeing her perspective. It's not my perspective at all, but it's so interesting and unique and in my opinion wrong. <laughs> um, but something that I'm still open to reading about. So I don't know, this was a four star read and I don't agree with a lot of the messages in it, but I really enjoyed reading like the actual story of it. I loved the strong metaphors, um, but she has a way of making me want to read about characters I can't fucking stand. <laughs> So props to her. She's doing something right because she seems to be selling very, very well. Um, but if you are looking for a good, not super scary, but well done werewolf book, I really like this. This is probably one of the better werewolf books I've ever read just because it felt so real. It felt like this is what would happen if like your best girlfriend like accidentally got turned into a werewolf. Like it felt so modern and contemporary and real. And I really, really enjoyed it for that. So definitely a weird one but I liked it more than Cackle and I will definitely read more from Rachel Harrison. She's got a very, very unique view um, on things and I'm about it. So yeah, that is all that I have for you guys today. As always, I post every Monday and Thursday, sometimes on Saturdays. And if you enjoy these videos, please hit the like and subscribe buttons down below and I will catch you all in the next one. Mwah.